you guessed it, it's time for another feature. So now I'm working on the top middle section of the pegboard and I've decided I'm going to not only bridge it with a long bridge this time instead of the four short ones I used on the bottom, but I'm also going to use this bridge as the method to attach it to the wall. I actually wanted to be able to lift the pegboard off and on fairly easily. Obviously the bench is going to take most of the weight and this little mechanism I stole off Woodworking for Mere Mortals as usual, uh, which I think Steve used to put a TV up onto a TV stand and I'm going to be using the same uh, attachment method to put the pegboard onto the wall. The first thing I needed to do was some routing as you just saw. So I've just got the trim base on the router, the straight bit. Let's look at this setup. Fence all the way around here, around a couple of test pieces because that allowed me to get the perfect size that I needed to go through these two bits of wood. So this piece is going to be the bridge uh, at the top and the bit under here should look familiar. It's actually the middle section of the top there. And you can notice I've routed all the way through that. Just needs a little bit of cleaning up. And these two bits are going to sit together like that. Now you notice they don't line up. So the wall is going to be here. And it's just going to be this little, tiny little gap there. The piece that's going to sit in them will be one of these bed slats like that. So that's got a little bit of sanding here, a bit of finishing off to make that all fit in snugly. Glue it all up and you'll see how I'll attach it to the wall. To make the wall hanger, I set up a 45 degree jig again. It's gonna make a couple of cuts. jig, play it back to 90 degrees, cut these off square. Adjust the blade height. Nearly. No disc sander, no worries. been a jolly bit of fussing about but it's been good fun uh, educational trying a few new things and this is where we've got to with the middle section of the top of the pegboard and importantly the hanging mechanism so this is essentially it pretty simple this is a bit that's going to be stuck to the wall you see I've cut my 45 bevels there I've actually rounded over these edges that'll be obvious in a second and I've got three screws I just to think two is going to be quite enough hammer drill into the wall plug those in and then that sticks on. So that's the hanger. And here's where it goes. So that's the top of the frame. This is the bridge. And now you can see why I had to leave that little bit of extra space in the cut. Two reasons, just so it was aesthetically curved over on the front. And secondly, to leave this little bit of wood for gluing. So that's all still clamped up. It's nearly dry. I don't want to take the clamps off just yet. Need to do some creative sanding just to get this to fit. There's my hole that I've routed out. And this piece will fit, no it won't, <laughs> like that, that's better. Cool, so you can see what we've done now. That's going to be stuck down on top of the board, like that. This bit will be bolted to the wall and it will sit just with gravity like that. So the trick is going to be mounting this at exactly the right height so that nearly all the weight is actually on the feet and on the board and this here is just supporting. Obviously not my design, stolen it completely and that should complete the project. Here's an interesting little problem unrelated to woodwork, uh, more to do with drilling into brick which I actually do have some experience with having mounted so many things into these garage walls. So I've got the screws all the way through there so you can see what's happening. I've made my mark where I want that bottom screw to go. Now I've already pre-drilled those as you can see, that's going to mean those two top screws, that's the perfect height it needs to be, but they're going to end up in the mortar, and that is not very strong. It's kind of the end grain of masonry drilling. What I really want to do is move this just a centimetre up so that that one's in brick, that one's in brick, and that one's in brick too. However, that would of course raise 
my pegboard by about a centimeter and that's not what I've cut to. Fortunately, that's not a problem because I haven't glued that bit in yet. So to compensate for the upwards movement of the wall mount, all I need to do is take a centimeter off the top of that and we'll get it fine. Better than that, I'll be able to mount this to the wall now first uh, without any real fear of it not fitting right because since how I haven't glued that on yet, I can keep just very slowly trimming, 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 trimming and get it down to the perfect settling height. So it just does show you, be careful when you choose to glue things together because if I had already glued that piece in, it means I would have had to have been cutting at the 45 bevel and that would have been a lot less fun than trying to shave it off at the top at 90. Good times. A few more quick tips for drilling in masonry particularly rough masonry like this where accuracy is going to be tricky but fairly needed. I've already done the pilot holes and I've used about a half the diameter bit of the one for the final plug size. Mark them off with tape to the exact depth of the plug that I needed and that's going to allow me to do a few things. Firstly, more accuracy with the holes and secondly, it's going to guide that larger bit in. On top of that, dust extraction getting red dust everywhere not fun so just like wood i've sucked up the vacuum to the correct position and that's just sitting in there now so i've been able to test using my pilot holes that they are all in the right place this one here i've actually noticed is a tiny bit too far over so the other good thing is when i come down to do the bigger uh, diameter bore i'll just put a bit more pressure on that right bottom corner and that'll drag it ever so slightly down to where it needs to be then we can anchor it in Those are some really uneven bricks. So close to having project one almost finished on the wall and functional. There's the glue up of the final joining assembly for the top middle. And one of the last things to do is just grab the finishing sander and give all of this that workshop appeal of a nice smooth surface. Wall mounts on, to be honest, uh, it took me quite a lot of buggering around because of that wall being so uneven. Uh, mounting on a smooth flat piece of plasterboard or something would have probably been a lot easier but the undulations in the bricks they just threw off the mount uh, constantly and I had to sort of sand and trim for about half an hour to get everything sitting right but it is now get that bit in put it all up and we can finally tick off the first project Finally, there you have it. The world's shoddiest, most over-engineered, over-complicated, under-assembled, under-glued, and crappiest pegboard. It's only taken me the better part of a week to get this project together, but finally project one is complete. And while it ain't that pretty, it's functional, and I'm pretty happy with it as a first attempt. Well, third attempt. This was the first attempt. That was the second attempt. And this was the first one I bothered recording. It won't be the last of I've had an awful lot of fun doing this. And as you might've noticed, it wasn't so much about building the pegboard for me, although that is a lovely outcome, as to trying as many different techniques and new skills that I can, buggering almost all of them up entirely 
but at the end of it, coming away with a project to inspire me to get to work on some new things. Next one up, I believe, will be my multi-purpose table, starting with a router attachment. I'm very excited about that because that's going to let me get into some projects that I originally wanted to do but didn't have the facilities for. And get into making some stuff for geocaching and path tags, which is the number one thing I had on my sort of to-do list, I suppose, with these small woodwork projects. The last thing you saw me do was simply putting some screws into the back here. That's just to hold it nice and stable off the wall. Those little screws adjustable in the feet too mean that everything now sits nice and tight. I celebrated by buying the world's cutest little clamp. And the hooks. I've forgotten to get the hooks. All right guys, well thank you for sitting through this. I hope if you were a novice you at least got something educational out of all of the mistakes that I made as I muddled through this first project. Uh, if you're an experienced woodworker, I hope you had a jolly good laugh at all of the mistakes that I made on this rather simple wood project that took me mm, probably about 10 to 12 hours, I reckon, of total time to effectively build a box frame with a board in it. But hey, I'm chuffed. Look at the smile on my face. I'm really happy about this being complete, and I'm looking forward to making some more videos in the future. See you later.